so I was looking the last time we had you on the the show. It was October twenty sixth, um, and as I'm sure you're aware of, wasn't the best of times for Top Shot. Um, and so it's been a little over two months, and it's pretty amazing how much kind of sentiment has shifted. It's almost been a complete one eighty. I mean, I think this is the most fun. I think maybe I've ever I've had on the platform. My community's had on the platform. I think other communities. It's just it, it's it's really shifted, and I'm just curious to get your thoughts on why do you think that like do you sense that, and if so, why do you think that that's taken place? Um, definitely sense that things are cheerier. Absolutely, I think that a big hat tip to my team, right? Like. I think between what, just to shout out a few, I think what our kind of Matt Shore, Vinyls Never Dies on on social, what he's been able to do with flash challenges, adding daily utility and daily yeah. activity, that's been awesome. Uh, what Kevin Sheetrum and Carrie Omer have been able to do on social, just having a daily rundown of what to expect today. Right. Um, adding just a ton of all-stars across the board on the product side, on the engineering side, our design team, world-class as always, um, all of that kind of coming together. I think another part of it is, you know, on, on our side of the table, for better and for worse, we're always thinking maybe one, two months ahead. So when times are bad, we see kind of the the forest through the trees and we can see that, okay, these are going to be things that get people really excited. Right. But there's also a very strong kind of urgency on our end or, or a, a need to be disciplined and not reveal too much before it's ready because that does no one any good. So I think for our sake, it's all about kind of uh, being able to weather storms when storms do arise, but also knowing that we are very, very early in this game and we need to continue to deliver value for everyone in this community. So it's interesting to me. Like, like I always wonder, like, how aware are you and the Top Shot team of the community's frustrations, of our concerns, um, of our questions um, that we have for you? Or do you guys just kind of have a plan? Uh, you have, Like you said, you have things like that are coming in a couple months. You know it's coming. Your head's down. You're sticking. You're going to execute. And, and you got to just put the noise kind of aside depends on the thing of course right like there are things that i'll give an example um you know we we felt very strongly that so actually let me back up to answer your question we're all on twitter so we hear everything right there's not a day that goes by where i don't get tagged in on a new idea that gets five responses of that's brilliant Right. Meanwhile, we've discussed it three months ago, explored the option. If it's feasible, we're working on it. If it's not feasible, there are five reasons why it's not that we can't come out with. Um, all of those things, right? Um, so definitely know all of the the gripes, the talking points, and hear them really like they're well heard. And in, not in like a dismissive way, in right. a genuine, like, it's only two months ago that I was on this or what, two and a half months ago. And it feels like an eternity ago. Because in the Top Shot streets, in the NFT streets, everything that happens in a week feels like a month. Everything that's in a month feels like a year. Yeah. And what that creates is a really um, unfair dynamic and, and not, not in a uh, soapboxy way, but it's unfair to our product team and our engineers that are working, you know, 70, 80 hour weeks, busting their asses, building a really awesome product. But because there are so many things that we want to accomplish with this product and there are so many things that we still need to build, it feels, how don't they have that yet? How don't they have that yet? Meanwhile, we're just kind of hitting singles, getting on base, moving the runner ac across the field, you know, whatever it might be. Yeah. Like, um, I think that there's like a natural disconnect between Top Shot and the collectors, right? And this makes sense because you guys can't collect. Yeah. So, like, how do you reconcile with understanding kind of some of the concerns, frustrations that a Top Shot user is going through, whether it's missing, you know, 0 for 20 on a legendary pack drop and keep missing that, or whether if, whether it's having the jubilation of completing a flash challenge or, or, or a hard challenge or something like that. How do you guys kind of um, get get your, uh, be able to kind of get the, the feel of the temperature and how everyone's feeling on Top Shot when, when you guys can't collect and you're not really 
a part of a lot of the stuff that, that the collectors are experiencing. Sure. Um, yeah, I'll be the first to admit, like, I felt like I could empathize stronger when I was able to collect. And I think that's natural, right? right. I, I, don't, I don't think anyone would argue that. Uh, with that being said, I absolutely understand why we've put a freeze on being able to collect. I think that there's obvious risk involved with that as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think one thing we've done to kind of uh, counteract that reality is we've hired some really star studded community members that have a ton of experience in the community and a ton of experience collecting from pack rip and Brandon who joined today to uh, some others that have joined in recent months. Uh, we lean on those insights heavily because they've, they've been through the ups and the downs. I of course was able to collect in 2020 and I leverage that every day. Just, Obviously, the problem yeah, but, but very speak of so much has, I mean, like of you course. said, in the NFT space, that's like 28 years, 2020. Sure. I mean, like it, it's, um, that's like, like, do, do, do you envision kind of changing your, your philosophy at some point and, and loosening the reins and allowing people to collect at Top Shot in some capacity? Um, I would, you're a, you're a legal scholar. I would definitely defer to you on what you think is right. I, I think if we could put something up to the community absolutely would be like happy to get any suggestions. I've certainly have my own kind of perspective of what could potentially work, but I also am an idiot, right? Like I, I have community background. I love the NBA, have zero background in legal and just knowing what happened to the daily fantasy sports world when the, the DraftKings FanDuel situation happened years ago. Like I, I want what's best for our collectors, our community of people, and if that means that I'm not allowed to collect, so be it. I, I think that you're right. You're onto something and that they're in an ideal world is a way that I can kind of get those kind of pain points on a regular basis. But I also look at data pretty much every day uh, right. on different things and can kind of identify if uh, this issue is a legitimate issue that's uh, impacting more than 1% of the community. If this is something that we saw three times on Twitter and therefore, you know, we have to look into further. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, if, if your crusade today is they need to collect, I will happily hear that as the crusade because I, I think that it would be fun to be able to collect. Obviously, it's just not um, as um, straightforward. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I don't want to call it a crusade, but I, I do think it would just I think if you could collect, I, I think you would you would obviously get it just you'd, you would have a different perspective, right? Because you you would get to experience the emotions that that we and maybe there'd be certain inst instances where you'd say, "Wow, well, I didn't really understand that when when people were were you know kind of upset about that one." But now, as someone who's collecting and missing out on that challenge, or someone who who just hit that challenge or didn't get a pack or got a pack, I think you being able to experience these highs and lows. And I think it just, just would, would, would overall help kind of when you're making the decisions that you guys make, you know, in, in these important decisions, give you guys a little bit more, what's the right term, a right, right phrase, a little bit more, help me here, Jacob. Uh, uh, Information. Fidelity. Fidelity. Sure. Sure. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you offline because legally you can do it. Legally you can, but I do understand it's also a slippery slope. Sure. Um, moving on though. So, the next question I find super interesting to me, like, I, honestly, I, I'm a little obsessed with Top Shot, as you, you may have known. I stream, we stream it every day. Um, and I, I think about this a lot, L like the Top Shot landscape has really shifted. Like I joined the, the site um, in February, right? Sure. Um, and when I joined, I basically, I got on the site, I, I looked for my favorite player and my favorite moments and I just bought. Uh, and now when you're making a buy, you got to go through the matrix. Like you're looking at, you're looking at collector score, uh, flash challenges, team sets, uh, sets in general, shout out to seeing stars and hustle and show and all those sets, the uh, bottlenecks, right? A potential utility. Is there going to be airdrops? You got a lot going on when you're making potential buys. Um, so like how much are you guys are aware of this? Was this planned a conscious decision by, by you guys? And also, are you a little bit worried that we are, uh, we're kind of not valuing as much, the players and the moments and we're moving on to other things. Yeah. I think uh, 2022 is going to be a big year for us to kind of look 2021. And I said this on the earlier stream, um, 
we try to avoid talking about beta. I know the community likes to goad us into talking about beta or likes to talk about beta. And like the reality is part of being in a beta is experimenting and building things. And 2021 was all about experimentation. 2022 is going to be a lot about experimentation, but it's also going to be a lot about taking the experiments from 2021 that maybe weren't perfectly implemented and optimizing them accordingly. So um, I think you're going to see a lot in uh, 2022 that addresses the things you're talking about. And I, I think spend-based rewards is going to be kind of, we talked about that in the, the roadmap blog. I think that's going to be a thing you see consistently throughout the year um, as a way to kind of reinforce, no, collect what you're actually, if you're a big Trey Young fan, collect Trey Young. If you're a big Kawhi Leonard fan, collect Kawhi Leonard. Um, doesn't matter their collector score associated. Doesn't matter. I mean, all of it matters, right? Like to the extent sure. that you care about it, but prioritize what you actually want and don't let the matrix of these eight variables all have equal coefficients because that's not right. going to do it. That's not going to do any good long term. Um, so, you know, you guys have been stressing for a while now how legendaries are where it's at. Those, that's the holy grails of Top Shot. That's, you know, that's what you all should be aiming for. Also, the rares are very important. And, and the base moments, those you kind of want everyone to be able to achieve and to collect, those are kind of for, for everyone. Um, and so with that, I, I mean, obviously, uh, what's super important, uh, probably one of the most important things on Top Shop, it's getting a legendary pack. And to get a legendary pack, the best way is to get in that priority queue. Um um, uh, you know, I, in my contract, I have to ask, this is, I, I've asked you this already every, every stream. I have to ask you again. It's Jacob, if they don't, if I don't ask this, uh, they kill me. Uh, I, I get murdered. Uh, so my question is um, with the, the, with the priority queue, um, we still don't have any trigger points of, of being in the active queue, in the priority queue, like uh, being in, buying, you have to make a buy in the last 60 days. Sure. You have to be actively, in, like, actively engaged on the platform, just logging in on the platform. Yeah. Like the way it's currently constructed you can just, if you got in early on Top Shot and you were able to buy unlimited legendaries, packs, whatever, you can then just go flip NFTs and just come back for every drop. And to me, this seems like such a simple fix. And when the legendaries are at a mint of like 50, 55, and they're so hard to get, why aren't we just doing everything we can to make sure these end up in the hands of those who deserve it, the people who are actually on the site? Yeah, yeah, all fair. Um, I think you'll see us address a lot of that with moves we make in 2022. Um, again, like I think, Judge, the the context around all of this is like, look at all the stuff we've done in the last two months since I was last on the show, and and look right. where we're, we'll be in 2022. So you're, you, I've heard this before. I'll hear it again, I'm sure. But just know we are listening. We do agree. We're working on ways to, and maybe our solution isn't exactly in line with what you're thinking and suggesting. But these things are things we talk about and are mindful of for sure. Look at this, guys. We're making moves. I mean, this is great. Uh, all right. So, uh, off of that, how, how do you guys, how do you currently feel about collector score? Where where is, what are your thoughts on how, where that currently sits? Um, are you happy with it? Do you think? I know a lot of people come to me and they're like, we don't get enough utility of high, having a high collector score. What's the point? Uh, this, uh, you know, um, how like do you have plans to tweak it? Where do you see that going? Um, kind of in the future. Um, I think it's a it's a good question and it's a fair one. I think. No one internally would say it's a perfect system. Right. And there's always room for improvement. I think it's really important, though, if we were to make any changes, whatever we change ensures that we grandfather in people that have collected off of collector's score, that they're not penalized for doing so. Right. Um, so I think that's where we're at. And we're exploring what that looks like, but absolutely um, open to the idea of making tweaks to improve it for the longevity of the product and to ensure that NBA fans coming aren't, you know, necessarily chasing moments just for the sake of upping their collector score, but are chasing moments they actually want. Right. Um, so one of the coolest things you guys have done, and I think this should almost be unanimously, if we put it to like a poll, um, everyone loved summer league. What happened at summer league? Even if we, none of us, a lot of us weren't there. Right. But we love the kiosks. We love the kiosks. We loved everything that went on on the jumbotron seeing top shot. And, it, and we all, and I think this, this is kind of, kind of the bummer that you guys have to deal with. Right. Like we see something great and we're like, why well, they did it. Why don't they just, why is it? We all thought this would be in every arena opening night almost. Right. Um, so 
when when Roham was in had his AMA, he uh, he basically he kind of said that the reason why there hasn't been key and all that yet, um, and I wrote this down in quotes uh, so I could uh, get this right, uh, that it was too time intensive. Um, to, to, with, with the kiosks. Sure. So can you, can you give any more insight regarding why we haven't seen that yet? Now, again, he all, and they also mentioned that during that AMA, All-Star Weekend is going to be insane. It's going to be crazy, hinting at maybe that's when we unleash the kiosks again, and that's when you guys have a, a bunch of stuff planned. So can you talk to us about when we could see something like that again, uh, the reasons why we haven't seen it yet uh, sure. this season, and also All-Star Weekend? Sure. Um three-parter where should i start i'll start on i think we're all aligned it was awesome to see it summer yeah. we all liked it we that's the future we all agree that it's an amazing place to be um looking at the data it was overwhelmingly uh clear that that is a move for our existing community and while it might draw eyebrows from the crowd at summer league it was not something that an overwhelming amount of new people were able to kind of get in line and buy their first moments just with the sheer scale of that line, you know, to in the process of buying the moment, signing up for an account and buying that moment, I was about, and waiting in the line, it was about a half hour of friction. That's a lot of friction for someone totally new. That's trying to give a flyer to a project. They don't know if they like or not. Right. Well, wow, that's fast. That's, that's super fascinating to me. So that I think was the, the friction involved of getting a new user because right. the, the demand, you saw the pictures, the demand was clearly there, right? but the amount of time it takes for someone to work through that line to get in, right? all right, I, maybe I'll come back after the next game. I'm not going to wait oh. in a half hour line. That, that's the reality. So super time intensive on the new user, new collector perspective, but also super time intensive on our team planning it. And also our team is still fairly lean. So all of those layers together just tell us maybe now is not the right time to really go all in on that. Not saying that long term it's not, but we need to come up with more frictionless uh, capabilities to ensure that people can come through. See, like the thing that I find super fascinating about this, the amount of people, Jacob, that would come to me angrily about the fact that we don't have kiosks yet, right? Like, how, like you had like what you just shared, I think is so important. And I think if you guys just would have told us that like months ago at the start of the season, we all would have been like, yeah, that makes, that makes perfect sense. Sure. Like now we get it. Is there a reason why you guys don't communicate that, that stuff to us? Like, um, I'm just, I'm so, I'm, this is really fascinating to me. Like I, I never really took that into account. Um, I don't think it, like, I, I think, um, it's fair to ask and, I think the framing of it makes it feel more like manipulative than it is. Like, I don't think it's like, Hey, let's just not share that. I think it's more just like, Hey, everyone in the community thinks that kiosks were a big hit because they saw on social that it looked really cool. We don't really want to stomp on their excitement about it. And I can see the flip side of, well, you know, by not stomping on the excitement, we're actively allowing them to kind of let their head get carried away. But, right. um, but yeah, I, I think like, I don't think it, it, if you were in Vegas, you were on the line. It, it's uh, definitely not as straightforward as just speeding up the line. So what do we, so what do we do then to, 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 to fix that? What do we do so we can make that experience more smooth in terms of time? Sure. Um, you want, I'll, I'll volunteer. You want me to go to the, uh, next no, arena literally, and, literally. And, uh, like, what, what, what do you need? Uh, like, we're here mm -hmm. to help. Yeah, literally not a matter of uh, more help needed or anything of that sort. It's just the we have we had iPads at the kiosk in order to sign up and, and get yourself your moment. You needed to use one of our kiosks. We had what maybe four kiosks in the place. I mean, right. at any given time, four people can sign up. Right. Maybe we need to scale that to sixteen ki. Uh, iPads next time. I don't know. Right. Like that's right. all possible. I think the, the real reality is like the ideal situation is someone uses their phone right. and is able to scan something and it's more frictionless. And of course there's risk with that as well, because if, if there's a barcode to get your instant moment 
and that gets screenshotted and shared on Twitter. Now, all of a sudden, everyone in the world is buying that instant moment. So it's, it's again, not as straightforward. Like the QR codes come with the risk of everyone, um, everyone kind of abusing it on social. Because the second that QR code gets shared out, then all of a sudden, everyone online is buying it. And now, why did you just wait in of line? Course. At the, at the, of course. Yeah. Um, is there so then, man? I find it so fascinating. So basically, this has to be our kiosk. Yeah, yeah. I think, and and when we build an app, all of these things will be kind of more, uh, more likely, or at least we'll get one step closer to figuring out solutions. I think the other layer uh, to another question you asked in that three uh, three parter, Cleveland. Uh, I think we're absolutely, you know, in interested and excited about Cleveland. We're also actively watching Omicron um, because that's the reality, right? Like we are actively talking to other brands that have already silently pulled out of Cleveland, right? Right. So like one of the people we were talking to as a potential partner, they are like, yeah, we're not going anymore. Like we're going to save it for next year. Like it's just not worth it. Like we've been down this rodeo before. So I think we're very much playing it by ear, but um, to the extent that maybe we were planning a full throated all out blitz, like maybe that looks a little different now because we have to kind of take half measures of if we're going all in there and it gets canceled, then the amount of wasted effort our team put into it, you know, it's not ideal either. Um, speaking of the app, any, uh, I know chat's already going crazy with the app, any updates on where we kind of stand with a, an update on when that could potentially be, be ready. Because I do think that will be a game changer. It will. Yeah. Um, no updates on it. I think like my, it's by far of all the, like we didn't even put it in the roadmap blog. Um, and the reason for that is the stuff in the roadmap blog we're trying to accomplish in Q1, Q2, um, first half of the year. Uh, things like the the app, those are things that we know are going to be bigger endeavors. And we don't want to just rush something out for the sake of like, hey, it's here. Like, um, so I, my, my apprehension and I'll be vulnerable here, judge, I don't want this to turn into the next when X, yeah. right? Like yeah. the app will come when it's ready, but the worst thing we could do is rush that out to yeah. accommodate the voices because when that is ready, it's going to be awesome. I hear you. And that's why I'm not asking the hardcore question, guys. I know we all have it. We're not asking it because you know, there's, it's the, the hardcore, hardcore will come out when, when top shots ready. Um, so like trade tickets, uh, are super interesting to me, and I think almost everyone. Me, I think two of the coolest moments I had on the site, I got forced into open two tr- S1 packs. Like the the day that you that you guys said we have these trade tickets, I came on the show that night and I said I would sell my soul to get in that S1 queue because that's my only chance ever to get an S1 pack. And I I just happened to be fortunate. I pulled a Giannis in my first S1 pack, a Giannis debut, and then a Steph Curry debut. Um, and to experience that. And then I cried. I, I cried. I don't know if you saw the video. I did. I cried with the when I got the curry. I was just convinced I was going to pull something bad. And it's just again, I take this. You know, I'm so into Top Shot and I love it so much. Um, like, how do you guys feel like the trade tickets are going so far? Uh, um, and in terms of uh, the the trade tickets, do you envision you being able to use them for other things, for merchandise, for tickets? I know a lot of people. Um, you know, didn't get S1 packs and they have all these trade tickets, they would love to be able to use them for, for other other stuff. Yes. Um, I'll, I'll end it there. Okay. I, I, no, nothing tangible to say today on it, but uh, definitely, look, we're, we're two months into an 18-month plan around Series 1 reserve packs. Right. Those are going to continue for... Jacob, I can't take it. I can't take it. I can't take another 18 months of this. It's too much for me. I'm out. I'm out. Honestly, I'm, I'm going to try again. I, it's too much. You're not going to try again? Oh, I'm trying again. You kidding me? Yeah. Of course I am. But I mean, I, it's too... Like, if I cried at a curry, if I get a LeBron, end it. I, honestly, I don't, what would I do? Honestly, I'm, I am... I legitimately am nervous if I pull if I actually did get a legendary pack one day or something. I, I don't even know. I couldn't handle it, Jacob. I, I need you to come and console me if something good or bad happened. Well, you get your hands on the legendary, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll I'll jump on a stream to. Yeah, to, honestly, I'm not having. I'm not opening a legendary pack without you. Yeah, I'm not opening a legendary pack without you. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about flash challenges. Sure. To me, this is this was the turning point. 
It wasn't rake back. It wasn't seeing our accounts start going back. This, the, the second you guys announced this, that was the most active uh, my Discord and I think others got re- re- regarding Top Shot. In like months, we were so into it. Like, like it, it's really rejuvenated us. And I think the entire Top Shot community following the games every night. And, um, you know, are you surprised with how much people are loving these? Uh, were you guys taken aback a little bit? Um, are you guys at home, you know, to yourselves, you're saying, people are really going to pay 80 bucks for a surge of Baca? Are these idiots? Do they realize that you're, you're, they're just getting an S2 pack? Like, are, are, are you, what's, what's kind of Top Shot's um, thinking when, when you guys are seeing how well the flash challenges are being received? Um, not surprised. I, I think so. Again, I'll, I'll shout out Matt Shore. Vinyls never dies on, uh, on Twitter. He's the mastermind behind so much of Great what job, we're man. doing on the Flash Challenges. Massive, massive fantasy sports guy. Played DFS for years. Uh, degenerate like yourself, Judge. Like he's yeah. he's actively looking at uh, Euro League matchups and doing pick on. Like the guy is in the streets, and he he also if you go to his OpenSea, he's an active NFT collect. Like the guy is a perfect hybrid of he knows Top Shot really well, collected on Top Shot for a long time really knows NFTs well, really knows DFS well. So marrying all of those together, we knew that he'd be a great fit for it uh, to just kind of run the show. Um, we have a great team kind of helping surround him to, to make sure that we're executing. I think that there's a little bit of revisionist history um, because if you re- recall, Judge, the first week or two of doing a lot of Flash challenges, we had some typos. There, Some things went wrong. The amount of kind of uh, I'll put it light. The amount of negativity we had yeah. at the time, uh, honestly was like the biggest reason why we weren't, we, we are a very nimble team. We're a very small team. And to be able to kind of put that together on the flash challenge side, um, and now having a really strong QA process with a lot of hands on deck to make sure when a challenge goes out, you know, someone's tried to put it together into a showcase so that they can see, oh, no, we don't have X number of archive set three point, whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, no surprise that people are liking it. I think like most challenges, uh, there are some collectors in the community that really are, they're going to ape into whatever they can yeah. And you mentioned the Ibaka situation. There was a Patty Mills situation. Juan Scano Anderson. There's been sure. um oh, By so, the way, uh, Jacob, uh, Patty Mills ruined, ruined Christmas. Be careful how you say that around around these this, this stream. He ruined my Christmas. I uh, other people in the chat. There was no way I wasn't completing that challenge. The only possible way I wasn't going to complete that challenge is if Patty Mills somehow got in there. And he did. <laughs> he did. Well, that was, uh, you know, that's the beauty of it, right? That's right, right. Yeah. 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 And what's nice about it is like the unpredictability. Obviously, Top Shot, we enjoy creating some unpredictability because right. that makes it fun. But it's even better when the NBA creates the unpredictability. Of course. Um, how do you – what really interests me is how do you guys – so like a, a, with the Flash challenges, a lot of times you guys will have a wild card, right? Mm-hmm. How do you guys determine – like, do you have this magic wheel and you spin it and you're like, today we will give utility to the seeing stars. Today it is a uh, debuts. How do you determine? Because you guys have so much power in what will will, will pump, right? Any moment, one tweet and, and so you could make any moment you want become the hottest moment on the site. How do you guys determine what you're going to have as like the flash wild card of the day? Sure. I, I don't think it's as like arbitrary as a wheel that we're spinning. I think we're looking at it's more data. fun to envision a wheel, right? Just you just spin, <laughs> you just spin it. Um, no, but I think like to your point, we are looking at what have we recently kind of accommodated? What are similar things that a lot of this might help a bunch of collectors that have done X, Y, and Z before? Um, how do we provide utility and and the idea is over time, it all kind of everyone gets their slice of the pie at a certain point, right? That's great. You, I remember you were uh, very staunch on the Top Shot debuts. Well, Top Shot debuts eventually are going to get you know someone yeah, staunch yeah. on. Well, they should reward X, Y, and Z next. And it's like I don't know if it will happen next, but if you're a collector and you're passionate about something, and there's another community of 
people like you that is equally passionate about that thing, we're aware. Again, we're on Twitter very actively. We're in the Discord very actively. We're we're monitoring. We're we're cognizant. So um, yeah, I think to answer the question just kind of directly, it's not not random, but it's looking at data and seeing what have we already recently kind of accommodated and what's still to come. And I think that's really cool because again, it just goes back to buy what you love. And if you buy what you love, you know what? You'll get your day in the sun too, right? You can't go wrong if you buy what you love because, yeah, maybe it doesn't have utility now, but it will. And Top Shots, they're watching, and and, and, you, know, and you guys are, like you said, you're aware. And I think that that's just really cool. Um, are, are you – one thing that I, I'm starting to get a little nervous about is is onboarding new users, mm-hmm. right? Again, we talked a little bit when I just joined. You just went on the site. You bought your favorite player, and now – uh, someone just was the other day was just asking me it was just jo- jo- join top shot and then there came to me with all these questions about you know should i buy this and then i, I suddenly was like well great buy then i was like well wait it's a bottleneck it, it, with collectors like right all these other factors now sure. and it is a little bit more confusing are you a little not nervous but what are we gonna do or what do you think we should do for that when new users come on the site now to make the onboarding process as smooth as possible yeah um Well, to answer the first part of the question, because I think it's actually two different questions um, and I don't want to conflate the two. Sure. Um, To answer the first part of the question, I I think I mentioned it earlier, like we are going, 2022 is going to be improving the platform and addressing things that happened in 2021 with good reason at the time, but we now have a lot more data and we have a lot more learning. So we're going to make it much easier for a collector to go into the marketplace and buy what they love and uh, spend based rewards being a part of that, but a lot more to come there. Um, just again, like to anyone listening chat, I couldn't recommend it more. Just collect what you love and trust if maybe today there's an incentive because you can chase X bottleneck or if I stack these, then I get bonuses on my team set, whatever. You can do that by all means, but Go after the moments that you're actually interested in because long-term, those are going to be the ones that you're going to want to have in your collection, not just because of technicalities that existed uh, during our beta. And so I'd say that's part of it. And then the second part, I absolutely agree with you. I think the new collector experience is an absolutely essential part of what we're doing here. Yeah. Um, so I think contextualizing it's important series one and series two base set packs were wildly positive expected value right um is that a feature or a bug could be debated both ways i think where we netted out is that it's not a healthy reinforcement that every pack that you get you want to actually create multiple accounts so that you can get more and more packs because you're guaranteed to make money and i think like ideally we want to get to a situation where you are purchasing uh, packs and there's a really good chance of hitting or there's a chance of hitting, um, but your expected value of the pack is right around what you're paying for it. And and that includes packs that might not be worth as much as you're paying. And that will include packs that are worth well more than you're paying. Right. So there's that layer of it. So with series two base set and and apologies, but indulge my rant here. Oh, please rant away. Uh, We love rants here. We love it. So with uh, Series 2 to Series 3, the base set differential is massive because collector score points are different, but also we are imposing a very strict roadmap with content onto Series 3. So max number of base set moments per player is two. And what that means is we have to ration out those moments over the course of the year. So you're going to see a lot more packs earlier in Series 3 uh, series three, as you've already seen, that might come up with three seventh men or, across the league, and right. like no disrespect to any of them, but maybe that's slightly less exciting. And I, I understand all the reasons why that's an, a, not an ideal experience. Right. And so I think that's important to acknowledge. Um, so the pack opening experience is your first time into Top Shot right now. We need to. Not, not only will it inherently get better as the season goes along and we don't have to ration the star players as tightly. Like I think a lot of what happened in series three is we were so focused on the longevity of the series that it started out with a, a whimper kind of by design. And I think what we didn't anticipate is 
two months in the NBA calendar year feels a lot different than two months in the top shot world. Right. Sure. So that drought of really exciting stuff felt longer. So that happened. Uh, number two, uh, while the, the stars are going to come in series three base set packs over time and we don't have to ration them as tightly, I think we're going to see through 2022 improvements to the, the base set pack, common pack experience overall. Um, and then what's important is bridging the gap where those packs get better again or get to a point where they're exciting to open again. And you're not going to get as many seventh and eighth men. Right. But also after you open that pack, giving a new collector a little bit of hand holding so that right after you know exactly what your best pull was, but not in like the, this is your best pull based on serial number. This is okay. Let me take you to the marketplace to see what this moment is getting listed at. Maybe help you complete your first sale because for a lot of new collectors, that's their aha moment of, oh, digital ownership is actually pretty cool. Right. Um, and then then guiding them to their first flash challenge or their first challenge in general where, okay, now I actually have a very clear, direct set of instructions. I do X, Y, and Z in the marketplace. I get rewarded with this awesome prize. And okay, now I understand how the game of Top Shot works. Right. So I, I think all that's like a very important part. And right now it's a little disjointed on every end of it, right? The series three base set packs are still maybe not as good as they will be. After you open the pack, there's no clear handholding of right. taking you to the marketplace. There's no clear handholding of taking you to your first challenge. So it's on the, the user, unfortunately, to put all of those together. And I think like all of these things are data points that we're looking at very actively and know we need to improve and have really strong ideas about how to improve it. But I think once those all come together, you're going to see a very different new user experience. And it's actually a testament to how smart our users are that they've gotten this far and we're able to get anyone through the funnel uh, and to enjoy it um, on their own right now, because I think all of these things coming together will make it that much easier. Speaking of, of new users, how, how are you? How do you guys feel looking at the data that we're doing in terms of growth? I think we're doing okay, right? I think like we're very much focused on fixing those core problems. Like we, my colleague mentioned it today, and I thought it was a perfect analogy. We had a first date, so to speak, with the NBA mainstream, right. and that first date was exciting, and we had you know, however many million people heard about us and we right. were on, on NBA trade deadline day, you could go to ESPN and right after 3 PM deadline, Woj wraps up, Brian Windhorst goes on outside the lines to break down what top shot is. Yeah. And all that stuff is like flash in a pan, unbelievably cool. Um, but what you're going to see is us kind of fix all of those things, all the things I just outlined, all of those things that are very clear, like pain points right now. Right. Fixing all of these other cosmetic things around the edges, continue to bring new features to the ballpark, continue to improve, double down on flash challenges to make, you know, ideally every day feel like Christmas day in that way where, right. you know, maybe there's something for that Joe Schmo who's new. Maybe there's something for DG the judge who has every moment to complete most of the easy flash challenges and needs a little bit of a, a prodding to go to the marketplace to get something else, right? Whatever that might be. Right. So all this stuff is coming. It just takes time. Um, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. This is all great stuff. Um, when, what I find, and I don't, so this is, a, I don't want, again, if you can't, I don't know how much you can speak to this one, right? Because it's a little legal question here. But I think there's a little – a lot of people have come to me and they don't understand NFL all day. Sure. Dapper Labs is in charge of that, right? Uh, NFL all day, you get a pack, a base pack. You can get a rare moment. I did. I got a rare moment in my pack. And it, it makes all the difference in the world. And I know because of the loot laws in, in Top Shot, we, that's the reason why our base packs, we allegedly cannot have – rares we, we just have base moments um dapper labs runs both of these products why the difference um good question something that 
I think there may have been some broken telephone in the community on. And I think it's a very natural thing to wonder about. Right. But I think the reality is nothing is etched in stone. Nothing's permanent. So anything that you see in NFL and have jealousy of, why do they get it and why is it not on Top Shot? Right. There's always the opportunity or opportunities may be too liberal a word, but there's always the possibility. And I think, I think where, what it comes down to is figuring out the right balance and figuring out how to work with our partners to make sure that we can do these things in the most appropriate and acceptable way for it, for everyone. So um, to answer the question, something that is definitely on our radar, something that we're thinking about in 2022, um, no, obviously guarantee if it were up to me, something would have happened already, you know, right, right. these things are complicated and not just the legal layers, but also every layer of building a, a very fruitful partnership with one of the best brands in the world is coming up with the right ways to do this. But is your, it, are you saying though, like you, you guys, if legally you were allowed to do it, would there be other reasons that would give you pause not to put rares in the base packs? Um, yes. Um, Judge, you're good. You're a good interview because I, I don't want to open Pandora's box here. I think like to, to put it simply, um, there are reasons outside of legal of why. And and I'll put it this way for you. Um, if you are someone that came to Top Shot to collect, uh, just to rack up a high collector score to get access to rares, and, and those drops, then maybe you, you would be annoyed by the option of sure, hey, sure. that rare moment that would have gone in these very limited supply of rare packs is right. now in a con. So there's that layer of it. Yeah, no, I, I wasn't trying to trick you with it because I, I genuinely was asking myself this the other night when I was thinking about questions to ask you. Like, I don't think it's that easy, even if legally you could, because I do see, again, we you already talked about it. And we talked about it many times on this show. Like, we don't want packs to be a slam dunk Right. And like like it's a delicate situation um, and it's not just as easy as putting the rares in the packs, even though I still think it'd be it'd be so much again, it would make the pack opening experience just infinitely better. But it's there's no white, so and black, white or black you, answers. Right. Would I mean, you trade that? Would, would you take that trade off of like, OK, well, now all of a sudden the collector score that I've worked for might be less valuable. Well, so see, that's, you asked a good question, right? Because I have a high collector score and I, I value that so much because it puts me in that priority queue. And you're right. If I saw someone else getting these rares, the the part of me would be like, well, man, I'm jealous. But the other part of me would be like, that's great for the community. It's letting a new user have a chance to sign up for top shot. And that very day pulling a rare. And how great is that? Right. So like I see it both ways. And this is why I know you have a tough job, because right. Either way, people are going to be upset with you. Like um, and you, you guys have to find what's the right balance between making people kind of understand the decision that you made regarding something like this. And it's not easy. Well, I think the framing you just had is the right frame. Like at the end of the day, it's our obligation to do what's best for the product. Um and best for the long-term community. And what right. is best for the long-term community doesn't always feel uh, in the short-term best interest. Right. So um, there, there's that layer of it. Um, uh, so yeah, I think, you know, we'll, we'll continue to explore. That's a good question though. Thank you. Um, so I, I also, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, so many of what happens on Top Shot, I just, I'm so fascinated by all of it. So we had the Christmas hard challenge comes out um, and everyone's speculating is uh, that is it going to be um, LeBron as the reward or is it going to be Giannis, right? Le- LeBron broke this uh, most point scoring on Christmas Day games of all time, right? Um, but the Lakers got their butt kicked that night. Giannis had the best play uh, – in terms of uh, it, it mattered. He had a game-saving uh, block. Uh, it was sensational. It mattered the most contextually in the terms of, of all the games. Uh, what a highlight it was, right? So to me, from a basketball savant kind of basketball, well, call me a savant, silly, but as someone who loves basketball so much, the Giannis, that was the way to go, right? But I see other people were like, it should have been LeBron, right? 
that it would have been great having it in that silver, the new set you guys have. You have a Curry breaking the three-point record, and now you could also have a LeBron breaking the Christmas Day record. So what I'm really curious about is when you guys are making the choice, what's going to be the challenge reward? What's going on in your head? Are you saying, look, that Giannis plate, the Bucks won. That was a game-saving block. That's got to be the reward. Or like, What's going through your head when you're making that really critical choice? Yeah, um, I saw you on Twitter with the LeBron stuff. I, I frankly didn't care too. As a big NBA fan, I didn't care too much about the Christmas Day points record. And, yeah, the more and, I thought you know, I'm with you, it's kind of a silly thing, right? I, y- yeah. Um, I think what went through our minds were a series of like there, there was a good conversation and it was spirited. It was a lot around Patty Mills. Okay, Patty Mills is now up to here these yeah. people with the hard if they don't get a star they're going to be really pissed at us and i do like in a perfect world i actually think the three best plays from christmas just on the merit of the play itself right were the ob the gary payton which didn't make it and the right. nick Claxton. i thought those were the three coolest uh, the Giannis was awesome but Giannis also does something like that every day and he has that almost exact same moment in the legendary finals sure sure right um but because, of course, Patty Mills got so expensive, it's like, okay, for the hard, we kind of need to choose a star. Uh, we very much not want to use up LeBron's only kind of fandom reward metallic silver on this. Right. I don't know if we're explicit about it, there only being one metallic silver per player, but we're very much trying to abide by that as much as we can. Um, so I think all of those layers were like, all right, well, we could make the Nick Claxton moment a James Harden assist, but then that kind of feels like a disservice to Nick Claxton. Like that might be the best play of Nick Claxton's career. Don't really want to take that shine away from him. So all of these factors kind of played into it, and and I'm happy with where we settled. That's out. really cool. So you guys are really are taking all of that into account. Like, what's the bottleneck? How much it's getting up in price? Collect if collectors got this player, you know, they would be really bummed out. Versus, so I mean, basically, if Patty Mills wasn't in there we could have seen a Claxton as the hard reward. Um, it, yeah, I mean, maybe Clax- it, it, we probably would have taken a poll internally of between Gary Payton, Obi Toppin, and Claxton, who's right. the one we want. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely it definitely could have not been a superstar. That's Man, that's really interesting. Uh, all right, guys, we, we don't have much time left. Jacob's got to go. Um, okay, first of all, thank you so much for coming on. I want to have some fun with you. Um, the Knicks, your Knicks, uh, I, I hate watching them now, Jacob. Uh, they, they, they're they so frustrating to me. Um, what would what yeah. would you like to see um, happen to the Knicks to they can have a good second half of the season? Good- I want them to try to trade for Fox. I don't know if it could happen. I think you may have to give up Barrett. I'm not sure if you'd want to do that. But what would you like to see f- from a Knicks fan? To what end, like, let me just ask you, what to what end does uh, trading for Fox – change anything i think it depends how how much you value fox right can fox be and i i, I think fox right now is just been mailing it in, in sacramento he came to camp out of shape that tells you sure. all you need to know sure i i don't just dis- but so can fox be a uh, number two on a championship i think fox could be number two on a contender a real championship contender? i think so really he'd have to learn how to shoot he'd have to improve his shooting a, a lot it's a big that'd be it's a big f right um so I am. You can the, imagine Fox in New York. The electricity oh, has game. I mean, absolutely. I, and and I I've thought that for a while. I thought that Fox in New York. He's like the perfect yeah. type of player. At least Kentucky Fox that was willing right. to get up into Lonzo Ball and just defend ninety feet. Um, I don't think that De'Aaron Fox is the answer. If I'm being honest, and this is going to get skewered by Knicks fans in the chat, I, I was spending a, a couple days around the holidays just what does a three-teamer look like where how do we become sellers out of this how do we get out of fournier's four-year deal how do we do like a bunch of stuff that just allows us to reset and so where it gets complicated is i'm convinced following the first 40 games of this year or however many games we've played that julius randall is going to have a nearly impossible task of becoming a number two or number three on a championship contender yeah he's by far most comfortable with the ball in his hands yeah he's by far most comfortable when the offense revolves around him yep 
And comfort is one thing. I'm okay with like so is James James Harden for what it's worth is most comfortable with the pretty much every star in the NBA is most comfortable with the ball in their hands other than maybe like Clay Thompson and a few other guys that are really good at pick and roll. Um, but where it becomes a problem is Randall lets that excitement when he's not comfortable, he lets the excitement and enthusiasm for defense really fall by the wayside. Yeah. Um, so I would look into blowing it all up and it all might be a little uh, hyperbolic, but I, I would trade what I kind of came up with is a three teamer where the Knicks take back Russ, get a first or two. Oh my I, God. Look, I'm Lakers not a, already signed up. Lakers are. Yes. Exactly, Lakers are already loving this. Exactly. I'm not a big, I'm not a believer in Russ, but I think at this point, we're not winning a championship with this team. We know that. Yeah. I'd rather reset the deck, get off of the four-year deals, the three-year deals that I'm not happy with. So if we can turn this situation into bringing Russ back, maybe tr- – so four-teamer, something – there are two different variations of this. One variation involves sending Julius Randle to Sacramento. One variation involves – uh, so we'll go with that one. The the th- the four teamer is Julius Randle goes to Sacramento. Evan Fournier and Buddy Heald go to the Lakers. Russ and a first rounder come to the Knicks. Uh, and then in that same trade, Alec Burks and Nerlens Noel go from the Knicks over to Brooklyn, and the Knicks get Joe Harris back. So I mean, that, that's probably too many players to to try to make. Uh, I mean, honestly, you just made Lakers fans. Uh, I mean, I, Buddy Heald's a perfect fit with LeBron. They should honestly th- that that would be ideal for the Lakers. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's it, really interesting, uh, guys. This is more 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 maybe more important than anything we learned about Top Shot. I mean, look at this this four teamer. I mean, um, well, the the, the three teamer is just cut the Kings out of it. Don't worry about Buddy Heald. Send uh, Kemba and Fournier. So the bad contracts from the Knicks, essentially, yeah. which go a, a full year longer, by the way, than Russ. Yep. Um, yeah. Send fine. those to the Lakers, send Russ to the Knicks with a first rounder, send Nerlens Noel to Brooklyn, who I think they could really use as someone that's a little switchy. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, figure out a way to get, I think Joe Harris is just one of those guys that, the longer he's in Brooklyn, the more his his trade stock's going to dip. Yeah. But the yeah. second he gets to a situation where he feels a little bit of a breath of relief of not like it's very clear. I don't know how much Brooklyn Nets basketball you're watching, Judge, but uh, too much. There are two superstars that have been playing all season for the Nets, and one who's about to come back. And if you watch them in the playoffs last year, you watch them in a regular season last year. The only one of those three superstars that trusts Joe Harris is James Harden. Yep. Yeah. So you're going to have this situation for the, the next little while here where Joe Harris continues to not feel trust from his teammates, continues to miss shots, no longer gets reputed as a shooter, goes to a new situation. I could see like Cleveland going after him. I can see a bunch of teams say, hey, this guy last year, two years ago, 45% from three. Um, they add him and he's right back where he was. All right, I gotta cut you off because we got almost gotta go. I have more, a couple more questions. That was supposed to be a rapid fire Knicks question, and oh, you wow. took forty five minutes. I mean, unbelievable! Oh, I love so you, man. I, the fact that I see, I got we gotta have you on a show and we just talk hoops for the whole time. I'd love uh, to, like at some point. So, uh, at uh, NFT New York, uh, you beat me in Papa Shot. Um, like I don't, I don't think the chat realizes you you shoot the ball and Papa Shot with two hands. It's a um, little ball. You completely flustered me. I couldn't figure out how he was doing this. So he somehow beat me, guys. Honestly, one, how do you shoot a Papa Shot little ball with two hands? And also, when when's my rematch on Papa Shot? Uh, so I'll, I'll maybe challenge you on that. I don't. I don't think I have like a religious two handed shot. I, it's very like it's definitely a. I learned how to shoot free throws you know, laces horizontally on the ball, you know, just get the rotation. And I try to apply that. Um, But yeah, I'm definitely not a one hand 
kind of flipper. Yeah, I was flicking it because that's, you know, top of shot, like pop shots, what you do it. Jacob's out here. Just perfect form. And I'm just like stunned. And he beat me. Well, you know, I, uh, I'm happy to give you some shooting lessons. I don't need shooting time. lessons. I, I'm a, I'm brilliant at Papa shot. I'm a, I'm like, but I, I just got thrown off my game by watching this two-handed, beautiful stroke. I will say this: I played Papa shot in Chelsea Piers probably five years ago against a, a former app I used to work for. Um, we had a team based in China an engineer in China. He was 6'9", played on the under-16 Chinese team with Yao Ming when they were like teenagers. Jesus. And I beat him. And to this day, just one of my prouder accomplishments. Um, who's – you get to meet, I think – well, then again, it's a COVID world. I don't know how much traveling you're getting to do. Who's the coolest person you've kind of got to meet or talk to? Because you're such a basketball – you love it so much like me, maybe more than me if that's possible. Like who's kind of the coolest person that you got to meet and be like – this is pretty cool. I mean, I'm talking whether it's D Wade. I'm not sure who you got to talk to, but who was you know someone that you're like, wow, this is great. Um, we're talking in person. We're talking either, either one, either one. Um, so before I joined Top Shot years ago, I used you were to scout. Cover, I covered the league. I scouted the league. So I, you know, I have the distinction of when I was 19 years old, there were two teenagers in the New Orleans Pelicans locker room, and it was me and AD. And I was interviewing uh-huh. the, like that. I, I got to being in school in Atlanta, opened doors that allowed me to have one on ones with James Harden his second day in Houston, right after he put up 43 against the Pistons. I was, hey, James, you want to do a story? And I'm going to talk to you about how you and Jeremy Lin are now the centerpieces of this Houston. Like little did I know now James Harden. Yeah. So I got to do all that. I got to talk to Kobe. I got to talk to LeBron. Steph, all of them, right? The only guy that I ever stuttered because I was just so like nervous was Pop. Really? Pop is like one of those guys that he's notorious in press conferences of, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And he's a guy that like doesn't like the stupid question. My assignment was ask Pop about why Tim Duncan is shooting 80% from Tim Tim Duncan career, like 69.5% free throw shooter. Right. And one random year early in the 2010s, he was shooting 80% from the free throw line through halfway through the season. And my assignment was to write a story about it. And I'm like, this is a dumb story. Like Pop is not going to like this question. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that one was the only time I ever stuttered. Wait, so what did Pop say when you asked him? He's just like, he's shooting better. <laughs> like, uh, just something like <laughs> yeah. very, like, like dry. And, or, yeah. Yeah. Did, um, you guys, did you get to talk to Duncan then about it too? What did he say? He's like, I don't know. I haven't changed anything to my routine. And then <laughs> That's a great I story. tried to interview Ime Udoka, who was yeah. an assistant coach, now head coach of the Celtics. And their press guy's like, I already told you enough of this dumb question. And I was like 19. I'm like, oh, God, okay. I don't want to lose my credential. Um, Um, So go go ahead. But the next time, fast forward two years, I got to interview Pop about Aaron Baines. I was doing an Aaron Baines story about how I thought he was the next Bill Ambeer. And it kind of, for one playoff series, came to fruition where he was a good three-point shooter. Um, And Pop gave me a delightful answer. He he took a good 20 minutes. or No, he took a good three minutes, broke down what Aaron Baines was doing differently this year. And a lot of it originated from the premise of if Aaron Baines is shooting 80% from the free throw line and he has a seemingly good touch from the mid range, do you ever think he can become a, a stretch big? Sure enough, like that's where the league progressed. And there was a year there where Aaron Baines was hitting some free throws. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a very cool experience. Um, and then through top shot, I'd say the coolest guys, um, I got to do a presentation of Top Shot with the entire Raptors locker room last year. Oh, that's so cool. Um, so that one was the coolest. Just kind of breaking down. They all had their cameras off, so I didn't get the excitement of seeing their eyes kind of pop when they saw their own moments. But yeah, just like that once-in-a-lifetime experience, of course. And uh, there were some other, like, I got the, to... Wait, does, 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 so does, does Nick Nurse have, like, a, a Top Shot account? Was he there? Was Nick Nurse there? 
I don't think Nick Nurse was there. Um, so could you tell the players that were they like, could you tell if they were into it or were they like, that's so cool. You know, could you. Yeah. Fred Van Vliet and Kyle Lowry were asking questions. I think uh, Stanley Johnson asked something, um, but mostly quiet. Most, you know, these were like team coordinated events of like, Hey, now we're going to have someone from Top Shot join this zoom. So make sure in your hotel room, you join the zoom room and yeah. you're going to learn about how, uh, uh, top shot works. So, um, you know, I, because their cameras were off, I couldn't get a ton of like, uh, feedback on how they were liking it, but, uh, definitely a few of them ended up on top shot after the fact. And, uh, so I, I'll chalk that up as a win. I think we should have utility for like the top spurs collector, uh, like whoever's, whatever we do, we do with the leaderboards and you, you get to ask Popovich one question at like the, after a game or something or like at, at a shoot around. How great would that be? Love it. Yeah. That'd be uh, so I'd, awesome. Right. I'd be um, now you are, you are moving. Um, I live in New York. Uh, you are living. I will, I'm not going to tell chat where you live in case, you know, some weirdos here are here. Uh, are you, are you staying in the same kind of state or where, where are you moving to? What's going on? Yeah, I'm staying. I'm in New York as well. Okay. Uh, I won't, won't break down the borough for y'all, okay. but I'll, I'll be moving. Um, just, uh, about a 10 minute walk from where I currently live. Okay, so, so close. Just down the street, uh, moving in with my girlfriend. So excited about that. Oh, and, look at this. Okay. Yeah, yeah very, uh, very uh, excited about that. Obviously, uh, when we, when I moved into this apartment, I did not anticipate that I'd never leave this apartment, just in the sense of being online 18 hours a day, whatever. So right. excited to kind of have her uh, next in the next room and be able to take breaks and you know, just generally feel like a, a better partner than I, I sometimes feel through this. Uh, so, uh, man, I have many follow-ups with that. I mean, honestly, before, like, so uh, I was going to ask, uh, why aren't we best friends? I, I, I thought mean, we, we have were, so much man. In common. I mean, we live in the same uh, borough, or, 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 kind of. I mean, honestly, we should be hanging out all the time. Your girlfriend c- could throw a wrench into that, though. She may not let you know. Be you're already working so much. I'm not sure if she'll be a fan of, of the judge, but I think there's there's when we talk, you sense it. There's something, right? There's something. oh, absolutely, judge. I always enjoy it, um, and I've, I think I say this every time I come on. I appreciate you. Uh, you're an awesome member of the community. It's great to have you a part of Top Shot, and uh, always enjoy. Uh, even when you don't think you're going to grill me, it turns into a grilling. So I, I always, this, Jake, come on. I didn't, this was not a grill. It wasn't right. This was there. Uh, let me put it this way. You are not afraid of questions that in an ideal world, uh, I will be able to just kind of skate on by, but I always want to give you an answer. And I, I don't, I'll take pride in saying that. I don't think I, I dodged any of the questions you asked today. No, I, I think, look, I think I, this was, I, Honestly, it was so enjoyable. Um, like just again, I love learning anything. I think the thing that the one thing I would say for Top Shot, you have the community behind you. I don't. I, I think you guys are aware of it. Even when we're like upset or whatever, it's because we love the product. It's Absolutely. because we love Top Shot. Like that's why we're so passionate. Um, and like, use us more. Like, feel free to, if you need something. Like, like a couple times during the interview, you said like. You know, you guys didn't have the staff for it, or you're, you're, you know, you didn't have the people to do it. Reach out to us. Like, we would love to help. Like, if there's anything you guys need, you reach out. I'm there. Like, you, you have tons of people who who would do anything to help you guys because we just love the product so much, and we just want it to succeed. It's um, it really is a remarkable thing, um, to be able to come every day and and talk about this product and talk Top Shot. Like, you have brought so much joy to so many people. And we just all we all want to want to help you. That's that, that's really it. I appreciate it, and and we know it. And I, I think, look, you're going to continue to see progress made on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Progress isn't always linear, but um, I would say 2021, it's such an insane year, yeah. scaling the team, bringing on so many really talented marketers, so many talented engineers, product people. Not everyone came straight from the Top Shot community, which I think in the short term may have uh, caused some growing pains, and in the long term will make us a lot more, uh, a lot stronger, just with the diversity of perspective and opinion and perspective. So, 
I can't wait. I think the year ahead is going to be amazing. Um, we'll have to do this again in, you know, another two months or, or less even, um, because it's always fun. It's always productive and look forward to being able to come back on. And a lot of the questions you're asking about today, hopefully we'll have higher fidelity answers and you already like my big thing is like, let's just walk the walk and not talk the talk. Right. Uh, let's get you out of here on this. Give me one thing that you're most excited about for Top Shot and one for the, the, just the NBA in general uh, going on this next kind of second half of the season. Yeah. Um, most excited about for Top Shot, I would say, is, uh, you know, I think the bidding system is going to be a really oh, yes. amazing feature. I still have 14 pages of notes to get to, but I didn't get this. Okay. But yeah, the bidding was on there. That's awesome. So we said that's that you're excited about that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I, I can't tell you if that's Q1, Q2. I know it's something that we've kind of already said is a high priority is something we're working on. I think there are a few other things that I uh, will be able to share uh, more details on hopefully in the next month or so, uh, maybe next two month Q1 timeline. Um, that weren't even in the, the roadmap blog, but excited about those. Um, Rookie Revelation. Ooh. <sighs> excited about that one. Can you tell uh, us what's the next set that's coming? Can you tell us or no, you can't? I can't, okay. uh, but I can tell you that it is coming in, what's today's date? January 4th, I think. By January 15th. We'll Let's have go. Five. Guys, a Christmas 11 days from now. Let's go. Another Christmas. This is By then. By probably then. before that. We'll see. Before um, then. Let's go. We'll see. Yeah. Um, and then uh, other thing, rookie revelation, just going to be, I'm not saying anything that we haven't already publicly said in the, Wait, the that, yeah, I forgot. Is that one? The leg- that's a legendary or is that- that's a legendary Legend, number guys, to, legendary number to 75 each rookie. <sighs> um, okay, 75, so a little, a little bit higher mint than the last one. Uh, higher than the, are you taking rookie. aback how expensive the, the the last the last legendary was i like was caught off on, guard on the marketplace or yes. um well i think there was obviously the Dwayne wade situation which like right a lot of those were left still in packs that just the, happened to randomly those happen things are frustrating like on one end it's like i think the thing about top shot is that every day we do 5x the number of things of most if not every other nft project sure and you do five things a day and over the course of a year you're gonna have what 10 crazy outlier scenarios that's just how odds right. work um so that one was frustrating just because you know we we work really hard on the integrity of our pack do you ever do you ever look at the rest of the nft space and you go this is ridiculous we we take so much flack and we are working so hard. We do so many amazing things. The rest of these NFTs do almost nothing. And they go they go up like 50 times overnight. And like our product is so much better because it is. It's superior. Like it just, it, does any of that frustrate you guys? The fact that what, the rest of the NFT space is, is what's happening in, over there. And they, you, can basically, uh, you can basically say the word stealth launch. People will buy it, mint it, and be happy with it. And you guys – you take heat for you know almost any decision you make, even when you got good intentions. Um, I think uh, two things there. I think one, uh, high tides raise all boats. So the NFT space being strong is only good for us long term. Sure. Uh, number two, as Uncle Ben said, with great power comes great responsibility, and. Like, frankly, our end goal and our, our mission is very different than generative profile picture ABC, yeah. right? Yeah. So we have a harder job. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat. Like, I think our job is it is non-trivially more difficult. Correct. And we have more things that we need to do on a daily basis to, to make sure that it's successful. With all of that being said, um, I don't look with frustration at the other projects, I wish all of those projects a ton of success and, and, and uh, hope their communities continue to thrive because I I think that being in the NFT space is truly life-changing for a lot of people. Um, But I I also think that maybe come on at night, there's a gotta be a party that says, can you believe that rug pull and nothing happens? No one cares. And we did such great, 10 great things, one bad one and people are killing us. Um, No, I mean, I think that that 
one mistake is an opportunity for us to learn. And I, I wish that He's good. Um, He's good, guys. He's good. I wish that we looked at, we all looked at it with that same outlook of like, look, we've made mistakes and I'll be the first to admit it. Rare you'll see us make the exact same mistake twice, right? I don't think we've ever made the exact same mistake twice. And what's at times a little. Okay, mis- hold on, hold on. The playoff pack, too many playoff moments, too many. And then the archive, too many moments. I, I had to call you out. Chad, I had to, I had to do it. I had to do it. But for the most part, you're right. For the most part, you're right. Um, I mean, too many moments is very, uh, look, if common moments long-term are intended to be. I know at the, t- at the time, I didn't know you guys were going to do this as common moments. I didn't know. It's my mistake. I know. I didn't know. You guys changed the plans on me and yeah. Um, you know, I think we were saying before, before summer 21, that commons were meant to be calm. Anywho, I, I don't believe mean to- you. But yeah, you, you're right. Yeah, you're right. no, that fair enough. Um, but yeah, I mean, I look at like I go to the card shop. Um, I haven't been in five months, but last time I was in a card shop, I certainly was able to buy a Michael Jordan or a Kobe Bryant upper deck card for two dollars. And like, did that ruin the card market? No, I think like right. there's something to be said for that. So, um, what is a uh, give me? I know we're running out of time, guys. I'm trying my best to keep me here. Uh, give me, give me. Uh, what does Jacob do to wind down after a rough day? What are you? What are you watching on Netflix? Give me your last Netflix show. Uh, t- are you watching? Are you reading books? What, what are you doing to wind down? Um, honestly, majority of the 2021 at least was just like work until I can't any longer and then maybe go to something you must have something i'm getting there i'm getting there okay and then go to nba reddit and take the next 15 minutes before i go to sleep of just going through the entire feed of reddit just seeing all the great plays from the night seeing all the interesting takes all the fake trades all that perspective so um yeah that's uh come on but something non-nba there's got to be something non-nba stuff that you do at some some point uh most recent uh, Netflix show, or TV shows I watched, uh, Succession, of course. Okay. Um, what am I on right? I'm I'm trying to get into this Netflix Formula One. I just watched it, Jacob. I just watched it. What do you think of it? It's unbelievable. I don't know anything about racing. I don't. I I don't. Not a fan of racing at all. But oh my god, like how dangerous it is. Uh, how the drama and the the pettiness of the drivers and the, and the, the, the people who run the, the teams, it's amazing. Like they, I think they did a, such a great job of putting that show together. I mean, like I never, I'm, I'm, I never knew I could be so interested in how it, team Haas and uh, team Ferrari and, and team, you know, and a uh, uh, team Renault uh, are doing it, It's, it's a, such a great show. Um, and you get such a, an appreciation for the drivers and what they're the, just how how dangerous their job is and just the sport itself. I, I'm and I learned so much. I love shows that I can learn, and I didn't know anything about Formula One, and it, like it's amazing. Yeah, it's been cool. Um, it I will say it doesn't really wind me down, right? It's, right. Yeah, it's, it's not right. correct. Not um, a show to wind down. You're right. So you know, I'm still trying to find that new one, but. Um, Chad, we have an assignment tonight. We're going to find a way to get Jacob to wind down, relax. We'll find him a hobby, something, because he deserves it. I got a glass of red right there here. You so we'll, there you go. There you go. We'll use that. But um, yeah. Um, Judge, appreciate you, man. Yeah, no, I, again, I, I, I just want to say, um, again, w- we all, we think you're doing a great job. And I just know what I said earlier. We really are here for you. Anything you need, anytime, day or night, you just ask and we'll, we'll, we're there. Um, and I know at, at times it can be tough and you may think you're taking heat for something. Um, but if, if you are, it's only becoming, it's only because we want you to succeed. Right. And if you ever think something is out of, we went too far with something, you always can come back at, at any point and tell me I was wrong or chat was wrong or whatever. Um, and we just love to hear from you. Uh, and, and I think it's just so great, like giving us insights tonight on some of those few things, it's just like, like like about the kiosks and stuff. Like I just, I'm like, wow. Like letting letting us know a little bit behind some of the decision making, it goes a long way. Like I think the Top Shot community is really smart. I know some of them are, are they may seem you know petty and stuff at times, but like you have a, you have such a, a strong, smart, uh, creative group behind you that just w- would do anything to to help you out. And um, you know, I think you're aware of that, and I just want you to remember that, and just keep keep doing keep doing you and keep. And keep plugging away because we love the product, and I just cannot wait 
to see what you guys have in store. And I, I'm just proud of you. And I'm just glad that I've gotten to know you and, and to be a part of the Top Shot ride. It's been a blast, man. And uh, 2022 is going to be something fierce for all of us. So uh, buckle up. Let's go.